Welcome back to Pristress Concrete Structures. This is the third lecture of module 3 on analysis of members. In today's lecture, we shall study the analysis of members under flexure for surface conditions and we shall see some particular properties of this analysis. The first we shall learn about the cracking moment. Next, we shall learn about the current point and current zones and then we shall learn about the pressure line. The analysis of flexural members under surface loads involve the following. First, calculation of the cracking moment. Next, location of the current points and then location of pressure line. That means, these three particular quantities come within the analysis of the members under surface loads and now we shall study each one of them individually. First, cracking moment. The cracking moment is defined as the moment due to external loads at which the first crack occurs in a pre-stressed flexural member. Again to repeat, it is the moment corresponding to the first crack. After that, there will be more cracking, but we are just considering the moment corresponding to the first crack. Considering the variability in stress at the occurrence of the first crack, the evaluated cracking moment is just an estimate. Nevertheless, the evaluation of cracking moment is important in the analysis of pre-stress concrete members. We have to be aware of that the concrete inherently shows variations in its properties, especially show for the cracking stress. Hence, the cracking moment that we evaluate is an estimate. It may not be the exact value when you test a beam under the testing machine. But still, the evaluation of the cracking moment helps us to check the properties of the member under study. For type 1 and type 2 pre-stressing members, cracking is not allowed under service loads. Type 1 pre-stressed members are considered to be fully pre-stressed where no tensile stress is allowed under service loads. Type 2 members are called limited pre-stressed members where tensile stress is allowed but cracking is not allowed under service loads. Now, hence it is imperative to check that the cracking moment is greater than the moment due to service loads for these members. That is, this is one purpose of calculating the cracking moment is that once we have an estimate of the cracking moment and if we compare it with the moment due to the service loads and if you find that the moment due to the service loads is less than the cracking moment, then we can expect that the members will not crack under the service loads. The stress at the bottom edge of the beam corresponding to the cracking moment which is denoted as MCR is equal to the modulus of rupture. The modulus of rupture is the flexural tensile strength 
measured by testing beams under two point loading which is also called four point loading including the reactions. Earlier in the module of material properties we had studied about the modulus of rupture which is a measure of the tensile strength of concrete. It is a flexural tensile strength of concrete which is measured by testing beams under two point loading and this value is corresponds to the stress when the cracking moment occurs in a particular member. Hence before calculating the cracking moment we need to estimate the modulus of rupture. The modulus of rupture which is denoted as FCR is expressed in terms of the characteristic compressive strength which is denoted as FCK of the concrete by the following equation as per IS 456-2000. The equation is FCR is equal to 0 0.7 times square root of FCK. Here both FCR and FCK are in Newton per millimeter square. That is if we know the characteristic strength of the concrete we can estimate the modulus of rupture by this simple expression. And next when we know the modulus of rupture we are able to estimate the cracking moment for a particular beam. Based on the stress concept the stress at the bottom edge corresponding to MCR is equal to the modulus of rupture FCR. That means to estimate MCR we are going back to the stress concept of analysis and we are equating the stress at the bottom to be tensile with a value of FCR. On the left hand side we see the effective pre-stress occurring at a certain eccentricity. MCR is the moment due to the external loads which also includes its self wet and corresponding to the occurrence of MCR the in the resultant stress profile the stress at the bottom is tensile with a value of FCR. This is the state of stress along the depth of the section when the moment due to the external loads is equal to MCR. From the expression that we have seen under the analysis based on stress concept, we are writing that the total stress which is composed of the compressive uniform compressive stress, then the compressive stress due to the pre-stressing force with an eccentricity E and then the tensile stress which is from the cracking moment for all these terms we are finding out the stress at the bottom of the beam and we are equating that to the modulus of rupture FCR. That means we are equating the stress to FCR and we are equating the moment to MCR in the expression of the stress. After that we are transposing the term with MCR on the left side and rest of the terms on the right side and then we get an expression of MCR the cracking moment which is equal to FCR times I divided by YB plus the effective pre-stress times I divided by A times YB plus the effective pre-stress times E. Thus we have an analytical expression which relates MCR to the section and material properties and the pre-stressing variables. What we understand is that MCR depends not only on the section properties and the material properties, but it also depends on the amount of pre-stressing force. Next we are moving on to the study of the current points. 
when the CGS or the centroid of the tendons is located within a specific zone of a beam, tensile stresses are not generated. This zone is called the kern of a section. For a section symmetric about a vertical axis, the kern is within the levels of the upper and lower kern points. What we are saying is that whenever the force occurs within a certain zone, it does not create any tension in the section and that zone is called the kern zone. The kern zone is limited within two levels, one is called the top kern level and the other is called the bottom kern level. Hence, to calculate the kern zone, we need to find out the kern levels or these are also called the kern points. When the resultant compression C under service load is located at the upper kern point, the stress at the bottom edge is 0. Then how do we define the current points or how do we calculate the current points? The condition is that when the resultant compression in the concrete C occurs at the upper current point under service loads, then the bottom edge will have a zero stress. This is the condition of the upper current point. Similarly, when C at transfer of pre-stress is located at the bottom current point, the stress at the upper edge is zero. That means at transfer only the self weight is acting and at that time if the compression is occurring at the bottom current point, then which will have zero stress at the top and the levels of the upper and current points from the CGC are denoted as KT and KB respectively. Based on the stress concept, the stress at the bottom edge corresponding to C at KT above CGC is equated to 0. This is the way we are calculating the current point or the current level. When C acts at the upper current level which is at a distance KT from CGC, then we have a zero stress at the bottom. Now on the right hand side, we see the resultant stress profile when C acts at the upper current point. <clears throat> if we write the expression of the stress at the bottom corresponding to this location of C, we find that the first term is the uniform compression caused by C and the second term is due to the eccentricity of C from the CGC which is given by C times KT which is the moment due to C times YB which is the distance of the bottom edge from the CGC divided by I and the sum total is equal to 0. We are substituting I equal to A R square where R is the radius of gyration. Once we substitute that and we transpose the terms, we can find out an expression of the upper current point KT is equal to the square of the radius of gyration divided by YB which is the distance of the bottom edge from the CGC. Thus, this equation expresses the location of upper current point in terms of the section properties and here R is the radius of gyration. Similarly to the location of KT, the location of the bottom current point is calculated as follows. 
C occurs at the bottom current point which is at a distance k b from the C G C. The resultant stress profile is shown on the right side, there is zero stress at the top and then there is an increasing compression. If we write the expression of the stress at the top, then the first term is the uniform compression and the second term is the stress corresponding to the eccentricity of C which is equal to C times k b times y t which is the distance of the top from the C G C divided by i and the sum total is equal to 0. Again substituting i equal to a r square we can find out an expression of the bottom current point which is given as k b is equal to r square by y t. Again here r is the radius of gyration and y t is the distance of the top edge from the C G C. Once we know the cracking uh, the current points, we can also determine the cracking moment using these current points. The cracking moment is slightly greater than the moment causing zero stress at the bottom. C is located above k t to cause a tensile stress equal to the modulus of rupture F C R at the bottom. The incremental moment is given as F C R i divided by y b. Let us understand this from the following stress diagram. In this diagram we can observe that if the compression occurs at the top current point then we have the stress diagram as shown here with zero stress at the bottom. If we shift C slightly above the top current point by a distance delta Z then there will be an additional stress profile with the modulus of rupture showing up at the bottom edge. The resultant stress profile will have a bottom stress of equal to F C R and which is tensile in nature. This additional increase in the moment due to the shift of the C from the top current point to a level which is delta z above the top current point causes this additional tensile stress in the section which corresponds to the cracking moment of the section. The cracking moment is thus given as C times the total lever arm which is if we go back to the figure the total lever arm is equal to E plus E C which is equal to E plus K T plus delta Z and that we have written here that M C R is equal to C times K T plus E plus delta Z and then C times delta Z we are equating to F C R I by Y B because that is the incremental moment which is beyond the moment causing zero stress at the bottom and this incremental moment causes cracking at the bottom. Now this is another expression of the cracking moment which is in terms of the current points and the modulus of rupture. But the, mo the expression of M C R that we had seen earlier and the second expression they are in fact same and we can prove that by substituting C is equal to the effective pre stress P E, K T is equal to R square by Y B and R square equal to I by A. Then once we substitute this variables into this expression we can get back 
the first expression of the cracking moment. That means we have two approaches to calculate the cracking moment. The first one is from the basic definition based on the stress concept and the second one is based on the location of C above the upper current point. Now both these approaches will give the same value of the cracking moment. Next we are studying the pressure line. The pressure line in a beam is the locus of the resultant compression C along the length. It is also called the thrust line or C line. As we move along the span of a beam, the profile of the tendon changes, the external moment changes and the shift of C from the tendon also changes. If we plot a line connecting all the points of the location of C along the span of the beam, that line is called the pressure line for the beam for that particular given load. Now the pressure line is used to check whether the C at transfer and under service loads is falling within the kern of the section. Again here we are using the pressure line to ensure whether there is any tensile stress in the section or not. If the C at transfer is within the kern zone and if the C at service loads is also within the current zone, then we can say that for any type of service loads, we can expect that C will always be within the current zone and the section will always be under compression. The eccentricity of the pressure line which is represented as EC from the CGC should be less than KT to ensure C is in the current point. That means the way to make sure that C is within the current point is the distance of the pressure line at any point of the beam which from the CGC should be less than the top current level under service loads. The pressure line can be located from the lever arm and eccentricity of CGS as follows. The lever arm is given as the moment divided by the compressive force that is the lever arm between the tension in the pistacing tendon and compression in the concrete and then the location of the pressure line is given by the variable EC or the eccentricity of the compression which is equal to Z minus the eccentricity of the tendon which is, is equal to E. A positive value of EC implies that C acts above the CGC. Based on this definition what we can say that if EC is positive then the compression acts above the CGC and if EC is negative then the compression acts below the CGC. To summarize a positive value of EC implies that C acts above the CGC and vice versa. If EC is negative and the numerical value is greater than KB then C lies below the current point, lower current point and tension is generated at the top of the member. Similarly, if EC is greater than KT, then C lies above the upper current point and tension is generated at the bottom of the member. 
Thus, this is the way to check whether the compression lies within the current zone by the use of the pressure line. In this sketch, the pressure line is calculated considering only the self fit of the beam. Here the tendon is at a constant eccentricity throughout the member and due to the self wet the C has shifted from the location of the tendon towards upwards. At the center the moment is maximum for a simply supported beam and the shift of C is also maximum. The blue line shows the locus of the C for the various location along the span of the beam and hence this is the pressure line at transfer that means at transfer only the self weight is acting and we are considering that this pressure line is due to the moment from the self weight. The next sketch shows the location of the pressure line due at service. At service also for a uniformly distributed load the maximum moment is at the center and hence the maximum shift of the pressure line from the CGS is at the center and here also the blue line shows the locus of the C points of C along the span of the beam and what we ensure for type 1 members is that the pressure line should lie within the current zone which is limited by the top current point and the bottom current point. There is another concept which is used in the design of priestess concrete members and this concept is called the limiting zone. For full pre-stressed members which are called type 1 members, tension is not allowed under service conditions. If tension is not allowed at transfer also, then C always lies within the current. The limiting zone is defined as the zone for placing the CGS of the tendons such that C always lies within the current. This the, to summarize that in a fully pre-stressed member where we do not want any tension at the bottom under service loads, C lies within the top current point. Now during the trans transfer of pre-stress in such a member, if we ensure that C lies within the bottom current point due to the self wet, then throughout its service life we expect C to lie between the bottom current point and the upper current point. That means C will be lying within the current zone. Now in order to ensure that we can place the CGS only within a certain zone and that zone is called the limiting zone. The limiting zone is used in the design of priestess concrete members to place the CGS of the tendons such that we can have the location of C within the current zone or it may go outside the current zone for type 2 or type 3 members. For limited priestess members type 2 and type 3, tension is allowed at transfer and under service conditions. The limiting zone is defined as the zone for placing the CGS such that the tensile stresses in the extreme edges are within the allowable values. That means the limiting zone for a type 2 or type 3 members is a bit more relaxed than a limiting zone for a type 1 member where 
corresponding to the CGS being located within the limiting zone, C may be outside the current zones such that the tensile stress at the extreme edges is within the allowable values. The following figure shows the limiting zone as the shaded region for a simply supported beam subjected to uniformly distributed load. Here the top line is the locus of the minimum values of the eccentricity of the CGS along the span of the beam and the bottom line is the locus of the maximum values of the eccentricity of the CGS along the span. We have shown the sketch only for half the length of the beam and the other side it will be symmetric. And if we place the CGS between these two bounds, then we ensure that the compression will lie within the current zone for a type 1 member or it may lie outside the current zone for type 2 and type 3 members, but the tensile stresses that are generated in the extreme fibers will be within the allowable values. The determination of limiting zone for a section will be given in details in the module of design of members for flexion. In this particular lecture, we are not further going into the uh, determination of limiting zone. Next, let us solve a problem to determine the cracking moment, the current points and the location of the pressure line for a particular member. For the post tension beam with a flange section as shown in the next slide, the profile of the CGS is parabolic with no eccentricity at the ends. The live load moment at mid span due to service loads is 648 kilonewton meters. The pre stress after transfer, which we have been able to measure from the jacks, is 1600 kilonewtons. Assume 15 percent loss at service. The grade of concrete is given as M30. We see that the span of the beam is 18 meters and the tendon is parabolic with zero eccentricity at the ends and maximum eccentricity at the middle. The cross section of the beam is we have a top flange with width 500 millimeters and depth 200 millimeters. We have a bottom flange with width 250 millimeters and depth 200 millimeters. The width of the web is 150 millimeters. The total depth of the section is 100 millimeters. The CGS is located 150 millimeters above the soffit of the beam. For this member, evaluate the following quantities A, the current levels, B, cracking moment, C, location of pressure line at mid span, at transfer and at service. Once we know the location of the pressure line at mid span, we can draw the complete pressure line because at the ends the location of the pressure line is at the CGC since the CGS does not have any eccentricity at the ends and at the end the moment is 0. There the pressure line and the CGS coincide at the CGC. Once we know the location of the pressure line at the mid span we will be able to draw a parabolic line between the end and the location at mid span. Hence, the calculation only at mid span is uh, sufficient to draw the pressure line. Calculate the stresses at the top and bottom of the member under the service load moment which is given and compare the stresses 
with the following allowable value at transfer and service. Here the allowable stresses are given to be same for transfer and service. In real situation these values may be different. For compression the allowable compression is minus 18 Newton per millimeter square for tension the allowable tension is 1.5 Newton per millimeter square. In our solution the first step is to calculate the geometric properties. The section is divided into three rectangles for the computation of the geometric properties. This is the essential difference between a rectangular section and a plan section. In our last lecture we had solved a problem with a rectangular section there the calculation of the geometric properties was simpler with standard formulas. But here we are decomposing the flange section into component rectangles from which we are calculating the geometric properties. The centroid of each rectangle is located from the soffit of the beam that means the top rectangle which is denoted as 1 its centroid is located at 900 millimeters from the bottom. The second rectangle which represents the web its centroid is located 500 millimeters from the bottom and the rectangle at the for the bottom flange its centroid is located at 100 millimeters from the bottom. Given this data and given the dimensions of the each rectangle we can find out the location of the CGC from the soffit of the beam which we shall represent as y bar. Now the distance of the top fiber from the CGC will be denoted as yt and the distance of the bottom fiber from the CGC will be represented as yb. Note that yb will be same as y bar. For the area of the section first we are calculating area of the first rectangle which is 500 times 200 is equal to 100,000 millimeter square. The second one is the area of rectangle 2 which is shown as A2 equal to 600 times 150 is equal to 90,000 millimeter square. Area of rectangle 3 is A3 equal to 250 times 200 is equal to 50,000 millimeter square. The total area is given as A1 plus A2 plus A3 is equal to 240,000 millimeter square. The location of the CGC is based on calculating the first moments of each of the areas about the soffit and then sum up those first moments and divide by the total area. This is equal to A1 times 900 which is the distance of the centroid of A1 from the soffit plus A2 times 500 plus A3 times 100 divided by A it gives a value of 583.3 millimeters. Thus the CGC is located at a distance of 583.3 millimeters from the soffit of the beam. From here we can calculate the value of yb which is same as y bar and equal to 583.3 millimeters and the value of yt is equal to the total depth 1000 minus 583.3 equal to 416.7 millimeters. Thus we know the distances of the two extreme edges from the CGC. Next we are calculating the moment of inertias of the individual rectangles and then we shall add them up to get the moment of inertia of the total section about the CGC. Using the principle of parallel axis theorem the moment of inertia of one about axis through CGC of the total section is equal to the summation of the moment of inertia about the centroid of rectangle 1 plus the area 
times the distance between these two parallel axes square. The moment of inertia about its own centroid is given as 1 by 12 times b times the depth cube and then the additional term is the area times the distance which is 900 minus 583.3 and this distance is squared. Once we substitute the value of A1, we get the value of I1 is equal to 1.036 times 10 to the power 10 millimeter to the power 4. Similarly, we are calculating moment of inertia of 2. Here also we are adding the moment of inertia about its own centroid and then the area times the distance between its centroid and the CGC of the full section squared and we get I2 is equal to 3.32 times 10 to the power 9 millimeter to the power 4. Similarly, we calculate moment of inertia of, inertia of rectangle 3 which is, is equal to 1.184 times 10 to the power 10 millimeter to the power 4. The moment of inertia of the total section is equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3 and this is equal to 2.552 times 10 to the power 10 millimeter to the power 4. Now we calculate the square of the radius of gyration. R square is defined as equal to I by A. Once we substitute the values of I and A, we get the value of R square is equal to 1.063 times 10 to the power 5 millimeter square. Now we have all the variables to calculate the current levels of the section. Kt is equal to R square by Yb. We have substituted the values and we have got Kt is equal to 182.2 millimeters. Kb is equal to R square by Yt. After substituting, we get 255.1 millimeter. If we plot this current levels or the current points at the cross for the cross section, we designate the intermediate zone as the current zone for the cross section. Thus, if the compression under any stage of load lies within this current zone, then there will be no tension in the cross section. Next, we are moving on to find out the cracking moment. First, we are calculating the moment due to self weight. We are calculating the weight per unit length of the beam as the density of the or self uh, unit weight of the concrete which is equal to 24 kilonewton per meter cube times the area and then a factor to convert the millimeter square to meter square and then we get the weight per unit length equal to 5.76 kilonewtons per meter. From that we are able to calculate the moment due to self weight which is, is equal to W d L times L square divided by 8. L the span is equal to 18 meters and once we substitute the values of W d L and the span L, we are able to calculate the moment due to the dead load which is 233.3 kilonewton meters. At this point, we are calculating the location of the pressure line at mid span for transfer that means the transfer is the first load stage when only the pre-stress is acting without the long term losses and the self weight is acting. At transfer the lever arm is given as the moment due to the dead load divided by C which is equal to 233.3 times 10 to the power 3 divided by 1600. Here C is equal to the pre-stress at transfer and we get the liver arm 
z equal to 145.8 millimeters. That means the C shifts from the CGS by a distance of 145.8 millimeter at the center of the beam. The eccentricity of the CGS which is the same as the location of the pressure line at the mid span is equal to the lever arm minus the eccentricity of the tendons which is 145.8 minus 433.3 which is equal to minus 287.5 millimeters. Since EC is negative, the pressure line at transfer is below CGC that is from the definition of the uh, expression of EC. And also since the magnitude of EC is greater than KB, there will be tension at the top for this member at transfer. In this sketch, we are plotting the location of the pressure line or the eccentricity of C at transfer from the CGC. We know the bottom current point and what we have found that the pressure line is located outside the current zone and hence we expect that there will be tension at the top of the beam at transfer. Next we are calculating the location of the pressure line at mid span at service. For service, the lever arm is calculated from the total moment which is due to the dead load and live load and from the compression which is now equal to the effective pre-stress. The total moment is given as the moment due to the self wet plus the live load moment which has been specified as 648 kilonewton meter divided by 85 percent of the total pre-stress at transfer which is 1600. There has been a 15 percent loss and 85 percent is the residual pre-stress and hence you know we have the effective pre-stress is equal to 0 0.85 times 1600 kilonewtons. Now once we substitute these values, we get the lever arm equal to 648 millimeters. Thus at service the C shifts from the tendon by a distance of 648 millimeters at the mid span of the beam. The location of the pressure line or which is equal to the eccentricity of C is given as Z minus the eccentricity of the tendon 648 minus 433 is equal to 214.7 millimeters. Since EC is positive, the pressure line is above CGC. Also, since the magnitude of EC is greater than KT, the upper current point, there is tension at the bottom. In this sketch, we are plotting the location of the pressure line at service and we find that this is located above the upper current point at a distance of 214.7 millimeters. Thus at service since C will be located outside the current zone, we expect some tension to be generated at the bottom of the beam. Next we are calculating the cracking moment. For that we are first calculating the modulus of rupture. FCR is equal to 0 0.7 times square root of the characteristic strength which is 30 for M30 grade of concrete and we get a cracking strength the modulus of rupture equal to 3.83 kilonewton per millimeter square. Substituting the value of the modulus of rupture and the sectional properties and the effective pre-stress, we can evaluate the cracking moment and the cracking moment comes out to be 970.1 kilonewton meters. Hence the live load moment corresponding to cracking is MLL with subscript CR is equal to 970.1 
minus the dead load moment which is 233.3 equal to 736.8 kilo Newton meters. Since the given live load moment 648 kilo Newton meters is less than the above value the section is uncracked under service loads. It is a type 1 member. Hence we can use the moment of inertia of the cross section because the section is uncracked. Finally, we are calculating the stresses in the member under the transfer and service loads. The expression of the stress is given as follows. The first one is the uniform stress. The second one is the stress due to the eccentricity of the pre-stressing force and the third one is the stress due to the external moment and we expect a resultant stress profile like this. At transfer we calculate the stress due to the pre-stressing force based on P0. We know the value of E which is Y bar minus 150 equal to 433.3. And then when we substitute the values of all these variables into the individual stress components, we find that the stress at the top is given as minus 6.77 plus 11.32 minus 3.81 and finally it comes out to be 0.84 Newton per millimeter square at transfer. Thus we have positive tensile stress at the top which we had earlier observed from the location of C at transferred below the bottom current point. For the stress at the bottom we find out to be minus 17.19 Newton per millimeter square and next we are calculating the stresses at service. The uniform stress is given as 85 percent of the stress at transfer due to the 15 percent losses and for the stresses at the top fiber calculating the individual variables we find that the stress at the top fiber is equal to minus 10.4 Newton per millimeter square and the stress at the bottom fiber with the similar calculations we find that the bottom stress is equal to 1.0 Newton per millimeter square. Remember that in this expression here we knew the stress due to the self at moment which we have retained and we have just added the stress due to the imposed live load moment. That means in the expression of the total stress we have the uniform value which is minus 5.67 then we have minus 13.47 for the variation due to the eccentricity of the pre-stressing force, 5.33 is from the dead load moment and this 14.81 is from the live load moment and we observe that at the bottom there is tensile stress under service loads. The stress profiles are shown as below. At transfer we have a positive tensile stress at the top and compressive stress at the bottom. At surface we have compressive stress at the top and positive tensile stress at the bottom. But let us now compare these stresses with the allowable values. Both for transfer and service we have the allowable compressive stress as minus 18 Newton per millimeter square and we see the compressive stresses both at transfer and at service are lower than that 80 Newton per millimeter square. Hence the allowable compressive stresses have been satisfied and next the tensile stress is 1.5 Newton per millimeter square and here also the top tensile stress at transfer and the bottom tensile stress at service they are lower than the allowable value of 1.0 Newton per millimeter square. Thus the stresses are within the allowable limits and our observations from the current levels and the locations of pressure line are consistent with the observations that we have got from the uh, calculation of the stresses. Thus 
to summarize in today's lecture we studied some specific portions of analysis of members under flexure under service loads first we studied the cracking moment we have defined the cracking moment as the moment due to the external loads when the stress at the bottom is equal to the modulus of rupture. We have seen one expression of cracking moment based on the stress concept and the other expression of the cracking moment based on the location of the current points. Second, we moved on to the definition of the current points and the current zone is defined as the zone in between the current points such that if the compression is located within the current zone then then there will not be any tension in the section and next we moved on to the def the pressure line pressure line is the location of the compression throughout the span of the beam we observe that for a simply supported beam if we know the location of the pressure line at mid span we will be able to draw the complete pressure line throughout the span and from the pressure line if the C lies within the current zone at transfer and at service then we ensure that there will not be any tension in the priestess concrete member during its service life period. Finally, we solved a problem where we saw the analysis of a flange section. First, we calculated the geometric properties by decomposing the flange section into individual rectangles. We calculated the current levels. Next, we found out the cracking moment for that particular section and we have found that the given live load is lower than the live load corresponding to the cracking moment. Hence, the section will not crack and but what we have observed is that the pressure line is outside the current zone and there will be some tension at the extreme edges and the same observations we were uh, able to achieve by the calculation of the stresses from the stress concept. From the stress concept analysis we found that at transfer there is some tension at the top and at service there is some tension at the bottom. But both these tension stresses are within the allowable value and also the compressive stresses at transfer and at service are also within the allowable value. This ensures that this member will not crack and it is satisfactory under service loads. With this we are ending the analysis under service loads which is a very important analysis for priestess concrete members where we ensure that the stresses are within the allowable value. In our next lecture we shall move on to the analysis for ultimate strength and there we shall see the capacity and compare it with the demand under the factored loads. Thank you.